Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to the MMA Sucker Podcast. My name is Tim Wheaton, joined as always by the editor in chief at MMA Sucker, Fraser Crone. Fraser, how are you doing today, sir? Yeah, it's good, good, all good. We, uh, you know, we said we got back to back UFC fight night cards that aren't exactly the cream of the crop. But with that being said, there's plenty to talk about. We've got a little bit of UFC 284 fallout, which I mean, we'll get there's a lot to, to discuss on there, which is <laughs> it's worrying to be honest. And we've got a pretty decent Bellator card over in Dublin. We've got some some well known names in in the, in the world of PFL, but we've got the big one. We've got the biggest Jake Paul returning. <laughs> Tommy Fury, Jake Paul, Sunday night. I mean, we'll leave that to the very end. If of we course. can talk about it and shit on it for five minutes, we will. But if we don't get around to it, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. But, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's noteworthy. It's click worthy. So we'll uh, we'll pass comment on it if we have time. But like I say, there's far more real fighting matters to, uh, to discuss this week. I, I And I agree with you. I don't think, like, this weekend history was made and and the history that was made was monumental it was something that we always said was impossible it would never happen in the sport but it happened this weekend we can safely say women's flyweight is now an interesting division we've made I mean, it. it there's time. like three contenders there that are pretty good it, it's time it is time and you know like you say you got three contenders that are very good and yeah. I, I saw potentially um obviously we were alluding to Aaron Blanchfield defeating Jessica Andrade, second there. round submission. and Incredible. I mean, second round submission, and she locked first, that submission First round? Up. Wasn't, it, wasn't it first round? Oh, second round. No, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no I'm, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, second sorry, round. sorry. But uh, I saw Jessica Andrade possibly getting a title shot off the back of a win over Aaron Blanchfield. You know, she's doing the UFC a favor by stepping in on short notice. Obviously, yeah. Talia Santos dropped out a couple of weeks ago now. Um, you know, she she's bouncing between the divisions she got the big win over amanda lemosh by standing arm triangle that crazy crazy finish uh she then obviously got the win over lauren murphy i think she had she had one more win on her on her record as well prior to the to stepping in against erin blanchfield yeah she had mm-hmm. cynthia calvillo first round finish in back in back in 2021 it's dangerous. i saw her getting getting a getting a title shot off the back of this because you know as we've alluded to realistically I've got a lot of respect for Alexa Grasso. I like her, but she's not the next contender. The next contender is Manon Firo, who unfortunately just isn't fit in time for UFC 285 taking place at the beginning of next month. So we've got Alexa Grasso. She poses some different looks for Valentina Shevchenko, but I think it'll be a fairly routine defense for Shevchenko, possibly even a finish. Unfortunately, you know, but I saw Jessica Andrade potentially getting a, a title shot off the back of this. However, she didn't win the fight. She can't get a title shot off a loss. She doesn't deserve it. Who does deserve a title shot? Erin Blanchfield. She looked phenomenal in this fight. She 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 stood with Jessica Andrade in the first. Everybody said, everyone I listened to, I'm not shitting on anyone, but you know, the morning <laughs> combat guys said, look, Erin Blanchfield keys to victory is to to overhand right, take take Andrade down. You know, get get it in the clinch, take Andrade down. She didn't do that in the first round. Yeah, she got slightly pieced up, but she was landing heavy on Andrade in that first round as well. I yep. thought it was a really, really fun first round. And, you know, I saw some people give it to the, uh, to the side of Blanfield. I saw some people give it to the side of Andrade. That's how competitive that first round was, you know. Just looking, just total strikes, Blanfield outlanded Andrade 46 to 43. This is the five-round fight. You know, this is a, this is on on paper. This this could have gone twenty five minutes, and these girls are throwing a combined hundred sorry two hundred and fourteen strikes in the first round. It yeah. was shaping up to be a really really fun fight. Before Erin Blanchfield didn't fancy it anymore. She 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 got the she got the fight to the in, into the clinch. Beautiful trip takedown, the inside sort of trip takedown, and then the effortless. From half guard all the way bang side guard straight away, uh, side control straight away. She. It was so smooth, and there was no, there was no fight from Andrade. And then Andrade obviously tried to rush back to her feet, snatched the neck. Erin Blanchfield gets the tap, going. I think she's now what four and zero in the UFC with with two finishes back to back. So, sorry, five. I apologize, five and zero in the UFC with three finishes back to back. I forgot about the JJ Aldridge fight, but and you know she's she's fighting. There, are, she's fighting some girls. You know, she's yeah. fighting some girls in this division. Sarah Alpha as as a as a uh, 
a, a first fight in the UFC perfectly makes sense. That was uh, back in 2021. Mm-hmm. Miranda Maverick, who everybody's high on. Yes. Unanimous decision dominated her. J.D. Aldrich choked her out. Molly McCann, who at the time, you know, it was on a it was on a two fight spinning elbow streak. Dominates Molly McCann. I think I'll just pull the stats up here for the Molly yeah, it, McCann fight. It, it maybe wasn't the, the 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 win name. It was how she did it. It was a very dominant performance no, that no. made us all like that. That's why a bunch of us I picked Blanchfield going into this one. Of us like that. she's sure. really good. She's exceptional. Exactly. You know, you, Molly McCann is. We know that she's got her weaknesses on the ground. Aaron yeah. Blanchfield outlanded a ninety three strikes to seven, yeah. and the, <laughs> the fight only lasted for just over three and a half minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, you know, it is what it is. But I'm high on Aaron Blanchfield at 23 it's years old. She'll 23 be, years old, which is, you know, in some ways disappointing for me because I'm 26. So I'm not yet, you know, yeah. I'm not yet on a five fight UFC. Well, what uh, are you doing, Fraser? What are you thinking? I'm, I'm busy at work at the moment. We're, we're making sure we got. I, I would do, but try, you know. I've, I've got a day every Monday morning, ten o'clock, to record the MMA Soccer podcast. That's so. right. Yeah. At, at the uh, moment, otherwise not... we'd both be contenders. Is that what you're saying? Kamara Usman, George St. Pierre haven't got shit on me, but like I say, they also haven't got a podcast to uh, to attend every Monday morning. So it is Fair what it enough. is. But you know, <laughs> no, they're top of the fight game. We're we're making our way to the top of the podcast game. You know, it oh, is yeah. what it is. But no, oh, back yeah. to Aaron Blanchfield. <laughs> she'll probably, you know, she'll probably take she. Uh, the uh, rankings haven't been updated yet, but she was ranked number 10. Jessica Andrade was ranked number three. Can't see yeah. why those two women wouldn't just swap places. Yep. She's in the top 10 now. Or sorry, she's in the top three now. That's for sure. You know, incredible. we've got Valentina Shevchenko, champion. Yep. Talia Santos, number one. Yeah. Also number one for some reason. Manon Firo. You know, I yeah. don't quite get why they're not one and two, but it is what it is. Jessica yep. Andrade, number three. Yeah. Kaylin Chikagin, four. And Alexa Grasso, sure. number five. What I think might happen is Alexa Grasso might go up to number three, Erin Blanchfield go up to number four, yeah. and then everyone gets gone because they don't want to put Alexa Grasso down further in the rankings if they're going to then try and promote a fight between her and the champion. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, they're probably so yeah, they might yeah, move yeah, her yeah. up a, 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 to the number three spot and put Erin Blanchfield one below her because, like I say, if 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 it was log- logically, you'd have Aaron Blanchfield just replace Jessica Andrade and knock everyone down a spot, but that would knock Alexa Grasso to number six. It's a harder yeah. sell on paper. So I think yeah, Grasso will impartial. move up. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But like you say, like you were alluding to uh, earlier, Talia Santos still well in the title pitch after a very close fight with Valentina Shevchenko. We've got Manon Fioro, who provides a completely different lo- look for the champion Shevchenko. Alexa yep. Grasso is the, obviously the girl that's getting the next shot. We've now got Aaron Blanchfield. We've got Casey O'Neill returning next month. And then you look further down, you know, we've still got Jessica Andrade, two or three wins together. Jessica Andrade is still a contender. Caitlin Chikagian, she's very much a gatekeeper to a title shot, but she's still possibly there. Lauren Murphy, I think, is probably slightly, slightly too far away from a title shot for, for her age, you know. And But then we've got Vivian Arujo, Andrea Lee, yeah. Macy yeah. Barber, Tracy Cortez, some Amanda rising, Hebas, rising you know, these, these girls are, are coming through. And let's not forget, looking ahead to this weekend, we've got the return of Tatiana Suarez. She's we got the return of Tatiana Suarez. She's not even ranked. And we've still got the return of Tatiana Suarez. And we've got yeah. Zhang Wei Li, who is a huge strawweight, who you know has been linked with moving up to to uh to flyweight. Like you say, it's quickly becoming from, from a very stale division. I mean, this time last Do- week. It is now one of the most exciting divisions in the UFC from yeah. in strength of depth, young, upcoming talent. You know, and that top 15, I don't think there's many girls, you know, over the age. Aside from, you know, you've got Chikagian, Lauren Murphy, Jennifer Meyer, maybe yeah. and- Andrea Lee. I don't think you've got many girls that are over the age of, of 28, you know. I know Amanda Hebas yeah. is young, Tracy Cortez, Macy Barber's really young, Casey O'Neill's really young, Erin Blanchfield's obviously 23 years old. Not sure about Manon Firo because obviously she had a career outside of the UFC and outside of MMA beforehand. But this is a young upcoming division and it's an exciting division as well. It's kind of crazy to say. I'll tweet it out in just one minute because I want to see if we get any quick reactions. But 
I think women's strawweight is now more interesting than men's light heavyweight. Like you, the stuff you listed off with the up and comers, the current contenders, we actually, or, or like even a championship crossover fight, we actually finally have some interesting stuff going on, right? Like this is this is a fun division we now have. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can quite literally say, let's, for argument's sake, let's play devil advocate Valentina Shevchenko, like we're maybe predicting, like the odds suggest, she beats Alexa Grasso. She'll probably play face Manon Firo next. We've then got probably a, an area in Blanchfield fight further down the line. If Casey O'Neill wins next month against Jennifer Meyer, she'll probably need one, maybe two more to get back off that injury. Uh, back from that injury, get her a little bit of form back. She'll be right up in the title picture again. Tracy Cortez is competing. I, th- I think she's got a fight booked. I'll she does, yeah. That. I f- forget exactly. I, I forget who it's, 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 it's against. But, you know, Tracy Cortez, 10-1, and one, undefeated in the UFC. Yeah. Oh no, she was she was set to of course she was set to fight um Amanda Hebas at the at the beginning of, of uh December, but that fight got cancelled. So she's without a fight at the moment, but she is undefeated at, at four and zero in the UFC, including a win on the contender series against uh Maria Agapova. We've got the flyweight debut, you know, I spoke to her a few weeks ago. We've got the flyweight debut of Gillian Robertson. Sorry, 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 she's she's moving from the division down to strawweight. That's my mistake. But you know. Even even so, this is a we can, we can legitimately say that we've got the next potentially the next five contenders all sat from from one yeah. down to fifteen, which yeah. like you say in light heavyweight you can't really do you know you got Jamal Hill is the champion who you know there's question marks over whether he is actually the best two hundred fiver in the UFC. He's then got Jiri Pahachka who is. On paper, the best one he's never lost in the UFC he is the champion he gave up due to injury. You've got Ankalaev and Blahovic. You know, they put on a, a pretty boring fight. <laughs> one of them got the shot. And then you look further down, you know, with the greatest respect, you look at the number 10 in the women's flyweight as it stands, Aaron Blanchfield and number 11, Casey O'Neill. You look at number 10 and 11 in, in light heavyweight, Paul Craig coming off back to back losses, Dominic okay. Reyes, who hasn't got a win since. Middleweight. <laughs> it's I, I been a while. The, like, you, you know, I can't remember the last time you got a win. Which, you know, no disrespect to Reyes, he's a phenomenal competitor, but it just shows you the strength and depth of 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 women's flyweight in comparison to yeah, in comparison to to men's light heavyweight. You know, looking yeah. down down the rankings, you could legitimately say that that Aaron Blanchfield and Casey O'Neill, ranked at number ten and eleven, could be two, could both get a title shot this year. Yeah. Just going through the divisions just quickly. Ten and eleven in in uh, in men's flyweight. David Dovak and uh, Tim Elliott. None of them are getting a title shot this year. Men's bantamweight is certainly competitive. Ricky Simone and Umar Nurmagomedov. Men's bantamweight is good. That's the but, best division in the UFC. You know, that's what we've gone on about for months and months and months. Yeah. Men's bantamweight is really catching fire. Mosvar yeah. Ivalev definitely a definitely a contender. Come on, Bryce Mitchell. You know, he's ranked number 11. Men's Super light, talented, wouldn't want to meet him. <laughs> I wouldn't want to meet him because I'm not sure what he'd do to me. But, you know, <laughs> men's lightweight, Jalen Turner, super competitive. Unreal, and, yeah. and Dan Hooker, who, you know, unfortunately is out of that fight. But then, you know, lightweight. You see that Jalen Turner uh, booked against... Uh, um, Gamrot. Oh, my God. Matush Gamrot? Come on. That's a banger. What a and, division. I mean, Jalen Turner's hit goal, though. He's supposed to be fighting Dan Hooker. <laughs> yeah. And Dan Hooker pulls out with a broken wrist or a broken hand. We'll go on to speak about Dan Hooker later on, of course. And is replaced by a higher ranked fighter in Mateus Gamrot. Jalen Turner. Amazing. From from fighting down is now fighting three places up. Yeah. But you know, you know, Jorge Masvidal's ranked number eleven in, in uh at, at welterweight. Men's yeah. you know, Derek Lewis is on the back of a four, three or four fight losing streak. And and he's ranked number eleven at heavyweight. And then you know, no disrespect to Michelle Watts and Gomez, but she's ranked number 11 at, at Strawway. I can't remember the last time she picked up a win. Yeah, I so, literally cannot remember the last win she had. And yeah, I mean, Misha Tate's long. still ranked at women's bantamweight. I don't believe Misha Tate's got a win in she, 10. She has one win since she came back. Didn't she beat up? Uh, she, she, she beat the, up the, someone. The Wait, teacher, I... the teacher uh, Maron Renault, she beat yeah. up her on a, on a return. Yeah, but they found since, some random person. <laughs> but since then... She, you know, she's she's one and one in in uh, women's bantamweight since 2016, and she dropped down to flyweight and lost that. And she's ranked number 11. Yeah. Sorry, she's ranked number 10. So this kind of tells you all you need to know about the the women's bantamweight division. 
in we were joking the about like if we got some training going we could be ranking some of these divisions you and i <laughs> i mean i'll start hitting pads today you know, yeah. to pay shit but it is what it is <laughs> yeah, it's about the same as this <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> But no, Erin Blanchfield, I think a lot of people, I picked her to, to win via decision. I thought she maybe yeah. would have, um, just the cardio aspect of it, really. I thought, you know, she was preparing for five rounds. I thought she maybe be out. I think she's good enough to avoid the shots of a Jessica Andrade, which, to be honest, it didn't play out that way. She took a lot of licks in that first in that first round, but so did Andrade. But she was good enough. And her ground game is, I'll say it, I think if as long as... Yeah, Mackenzie Dern's in the strawweight division. Her ground game is probably the best in the flyweight division. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to oh, see absolutely. a grappling match between her and Casey O'Neill. I think that would be fun. But, you know, and, and was Valentina Shevchenko's maybe, you know, Achilles heel? It's that ground game. It's yes. that, it's, you know, she. we had the, the round against Jennifer Meyer. We had the, the fight against Talia Santos where she struggled on the ground. And no one else has been able, you know, she's not a good... I wouldn't say she's not good because you know she's she's absolutely you know she's an insane talent, but she's her weakness comes when she has to defensively grapple. She's a good offensive grappler, you know, as Caitlin mm-hmm. Chikagian who got bust open, Jessica Andrade, but defensively grappling, she she's not she's not maybe the best offensive yep. grappling. Erin Blanchfield is a dreadful matchup for her, as is yep. you know Tatiana Suarez, who like we say is returning this weekend, so. Yeah. It's exciting, and I'm glad, and I'm glad that we got that performance from um, yeah. from Aaron Blanchfield because oh, it was a long slog. That card was a long. <laughs> well, let's before we jump into that, I actually do want to talk about the divisions a bit more. So she's coached by Carol Pravich, uh, one of the great Brazilian jiu-jitsu people in history, a multi-time world champion, and she's picking up at just at the age of 23. She's picking up everything she needs to pick up, so it's working out really well in that case. Uh, you said something else that I wanted to talk about, but then I forgot what you said. So anyway, we'll move on to the next one, which is Valentina Shevchenko. <laughs> And how uninteresting this division is, because someone with her record, if you looked at it without context, she should be considered one of the all-time greats, men or women. And we already kind of talk about that with Amanda Nunes because of how good those divisions are. Amanda Nunes, in fact, has less title defenses than Valentina Shevchenko. Valentina Shevchenko has the same amount of title defenses as Jose Aldo. We don't talk about her in the same breath. As Jose Aldo. Look, the only people in front of Valentina are John Jones, George St. Pierre, Anderson Silva, and Demetrius Johnson in terms of numbers of title defenses. With another win, she's with John Jones. But because of how weak and stale that division is, we don't put her even close to this list of all-time greats, despite her having those records. Imagine I told you 10 years ago when Ronda was making her debut, and I was like, Yeah, there's gonna be some like um Asian woman who's gonna be kind of good looking she's gonna be spinning back kick knocking out people all over the world and she's not a star you'd be like what what's the problem here the problem is that her division is terrible right yeah exactly and i completely agree it's you know it's it's, you can only beat what's in front of you in 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 mma but this is why demetrius johnson never really got the plaudits that he deserved exactly yeah yeah because he's number one he has 11 title fences and we kind of put him at like you know he's he's a goat he's just not the goat yeah, exactly. You know, and it's, you know, doing what he did against Ray Borg, that should be replayed on every single UFC broadcast, but no yeah. disrespect because it was Ray Borg. Yeah. It's it's not. Doing what he did against, you know, Wilson Hayes uh, is what for, is what it is kind incredible. of kind of thing. But this is why we think more of John Jones just picked up John Jones's record and it, his first year he beat like four UFC line. champions. Yeah. It's it was an insane Shogun, division, right? Rampage. Yeah. Machida, Rashad champion, Evans, Belfort, champion, champion, Chelson, and Gustafsson, that fight of the almost fight of the decade contender. Yeah. Yeah. Then then you almost think of wow, well, you know, he did fight Glover Deshira to a five round decision. Future champion. Look at what look at what Glover's gone on to do. Yeah. DC. And then champion. he had, you know, OV, uh, OSP, you know, on a return Things were fight on a late <laughs> guess you could say that. You know, but but that was a late notice. It was supposed to be obviously DC. <clears throat> But you know, stepped in on late notice, it was his return fight. And yeah. He had more time out, then he faced Daniel Cormier, Gustafsson again. And then we get into the Anthony Smiths, Thiago Santos, Dominic yeah. Reyes. But yeah, that was towards the end of his sort of light heavyweight reign. And now he's taking on Cyril Gann, you know. And the same with uh, Anderson, he had you know, the, the guys that Anderson beat, you know, Chelson and twice, yeah, um, 
And how he was beating people. How, like yeah, how he was beating Mark these guys. Bart, Yeah, yeah, yeah. How he was beating them was the most notable thing. Like, that's why his re- he's still on the highlight reel, <laughs> you know, 10 years yeah, on. <laughs> exactly. And then you compare that to Valentina, who, you know. Again, yeah, without looking, can, without looking. What's her best win? Without looking. I, I'd say <laughs> I've got two in my mind. Skill for skill, I'd say it's Joanna. I agree. Yeah, Joanna is the best win. Knockout. Yeah. I'd say it was Jessica Jessica Ride. That that body kick, body kick, high kick is a thing of beauty. And I will I From Joanna to Jessica I. That's the level. Like that's the gap we're talking about between those two title defenses. And Joanna was going up in weight and she was so outsized in that match. hundred percent But then yeah, if I'm just you know, I pull up I pulled up a record here. First win at Flyweight, Priscilla Cachoeira. Priscilla right, had no good. business being in there with her. <laughs> then she Sorry. then she got the win against Joanna. Then she faced Jessica I. Huge drop down and complete. Then she faced Liz Carmouche to a decision. To a decision, though. You know, she Mm -hmm. should be beating someone at the level and at the the time of their career. She should be finishing Liz Carmouche. Then Caitlin Chikagian finished her. That's a good win, in my opinion. Caitlin Chikagian, very worthy contender at the time, took her into the third round, but did finish it by TKO. Then she goes the distance with, with Jennifer Meyer, who really, again, she should be finishing. Then she finished Jessica, uh, Jessica Andrade. Then she finished Laura Murphy. Then she went to a very, very close decision with um, with Talia Santos. I don't want people to think I'm a hater. I'm not a hater of Valentina Absolutely Shevchenko. Absolutely not. But I think have realistic expectations of what this title run has, has, has looked like, has, has meant, right? Exactly. And I think that's why, you know, we're more interested in, in men's light heavyweight to a degree. It's because <laughs> we don't know which way. the I, I know without any disrespect to Alexa Grasso, we shouldn't be talking about it if Alexa Grasso wins. It's one of the biggest upsets in UFC history. That shouldn't be. This is a title fight. Remember, this is this shouldn't this shouldn't happen really in a title mm-hmm. fight. It should be all title fights should be really competitive in the main yeah. event. How's John Jones going to look if Cyril against Cyril Gann at heavyweight? Blah blah blah. blah. If yeah. Cyril Gann defeats John Jones, it's not one of the biggest upsets in UFC history. You yeah. know, going back to the last pay per view, obviously we had champion versus champion, so it's slightly different, but you know, either one of those men could have won. It wouldn't have been a huge, huge upset. No. Likewise, looking ahead to the, the you know, the pay-per-view at the end of March, if, if I, th- I imagine Usman will be the favourite going into it, but if, if Edwards beats him, they're one and one in a trilogy. It's not a huge, huge yep. upset. No. If, if Grasso defeats Shevchenko, it's a massive upset and <laughs> Shevchenko will get an immediate rematch. This yes, is- you will, yeah. You know, this is this shouldn't really be happening at the highest, highest level of MMA. You know, I released an article yesterday, um, top five beatdowns in in UFC history, and this is why that is article worthy because these things shouldn't happen. All UFC fights on paper should be competitive. Yes, but you know, a little spoiler to the article: I had number one Max Holloway versus Calvin Qatar. Nobody yeah. saw that coming because Calvin Qatar, such a slick boxer, he was on I think a two fight winning streak at the time. Max yeah. is on a two-fight losing streak. Yeah, that shouldn't have happened. Likewise, two guys with... in the top ten. Like it's a it's a well matched fight, and one guy killed him, right? Exactly. And and you know, looking, yeah, I think my number two was Cain Velasquez versus JDS two. But that Kane was a been... championship fight. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And you know, Cain dominated, dominated badly, badly beat JDS. Yeah, but that was ugly. But that's not. And that came as a shock to us because of how close the fight was on paper, how the first fight had gone, obviously, with Kane getting knocked out in yep. the first you know, minute or 30 seconds or whatever it was. But that came as a massive shock to us. Same with the, the Max Holloway domination of uh, Calvin Kassar and same oh, with really? the, the the Alexander Volkanovsky domination of, um, of Max Holloway in that third fight. These are all yeah. shocks to us because these fights on paper are so competitive and so closely matched. I don't believe that Shevchenko has the, or had previously, her record maybe suggests, you know, her record kind of backs up the point I'm trying to make is she hasn't had these close, close competitive fights where she's she's having to pull it out of the bag at late, you know, Anderson Silva, Chael Sonnen esque, where yeah. she's losing the fight and then she wins. Leon yes. Edwards versus Kamara Usman, he's losing the fight, then he, he scores the big knockout and he yeah. kind of gets away with one in a way. I think that the next sort of era of the fly, women's flyweight division will provide her with these question marks, will provide her with these tests, Erin Blanchfield, Manon Fiero, yep. maybe even Alexa Grasso with her boxing. Yep. 
But I think Alexa Grasso has too many holes in the game. You know, we'll go on to break it down a bit more in a, in a few weeks but ahead of the fight. But, you know, like I say, Erin Blanchfield this weekend showed that she is, Jessica Andrade, she's a championship fighter. Yep. She's fought for the flyweight belt. She's fought for the strawweight belt, I think, twice. Well, she was yep. former strawweight champion, of course. I'm yep. forgetting that, you know. Yep. She's a championship level fighter. And Aaron Blanchfield in that second round just handled her. Clinch, no inside trip, take her down, just glided into side control and then yeah. snatched the neck. She didn't even have, I don't, I'm not convinced that she had both hooks in. I think she only had the one hook in. And she, she <laughs> just, 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 just tapped squeeze. Jessica Andrade. Yeah. You know, I don't think Jessica Andrade, off the top of my head, you know, she's got three losses by submission. You know, the. the she hasn't been submitted since since 2015 when she was up at up at bantamweight against Raquel Pennington, and then she also it got. Like her, it was like a debut. It was quite. It was quite a while ago in her US exactly. career. Exactly, and you know, yeah, this, that kind of tells you everything you need to know about Jessica Andrade. That yeah, she was taken down by Valentina Shevchenko, but Valentina couldn't couldn't submit her. She was she was yeah. taken down. Uh, sorry, she she had back to back fights with Rose Namajunas. Rose Namajunas couldn't submit her. Yeah, Wally Zhang. Yeah, she just knocked her out in the first round, but she she couldn't submit her. You know, she didn't she didn't really need to. Claudia Gadea, really good ground uh, grapple yeah. grappler, couldn't submit her. Joanne Calderwood, good grappler, couldn't submit her. You know, she's got. I mean, I forget that she, she she's also got a win over Larissa Pacheco. Crazy, but <laughs> but going back to the point, you know, she's a champion. <laughs> so long ago. Such a while ago, I forget. I actually do forget that Larissa was actually a, a competitor in the UFC. Of like, she was she was probably ranked. She was a notable person. Anyway, sorry. I mean, she's now fighting at one. She's just beating Kayla Harrison at one. You know, Kayla would have walked in that octagon at one seventy. Yeah, and Andrade is now fighting at one twenty five. Yeah, one fifteen. <laughs> you know, she stepped up in weight to fight to fight. Um, you know, she's 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 flirting in between the two weight classes, but. You know, finally, I, I we've think, got competitors yeah. at women's flyweight where Valentina isn't just... You don't go into every single Valentina fight thinking, walk over. Well, and, and, and it's, I, it's think, exciting. I think having a foil or having a foible or having a rival is best for someone's title run because that actually does put them over the top. Like, Ronda needed it. She actually needed Misha Tate on that tough season to for have sure. a rival she was just blowing girls out of the water you know she sure. needed that tough season jose aldo never had a rival demetrius johnson oh no jose did we'll get to that in a minute but uh demetrius johnson never had a rival to make his career kind of interesting and he was just kind of like treading water jose's rival was conor mcgregor it really put one of those guys way over the top um and of course anderson silva needed shale son george st pierre Matthews really put him over the top. Maybe BJ Penn, you could say. John Jones, Daniel Cormier, of course. These people, like, it adds to what we talk about in greatness in sports. It's not numbers. It has never been numbers and statistics. It is always storyline. Habib sure. needed Conor McGregor to really put him over, right? So if Valentina finally has a rival, has someone who can push her, even defeat her, that adds to her story. And if she comes back and defeats her rival, now we're talking greatness. Now we're yeah, really starting right. to talk about this, right? Without a doubt. And, I mean, like you say, rival. you look at Joanna and, and Rose. They had the back to yes. back. You look at Wiley and, and, and Rose, and now you yep. know they're trending towards maybe a third fight between the two. It, Love it. it. But Valentina has not had you know her closest rival is Amanda Nunes, who you know beat her twice. <laughs> Close to an but beat her twice. Her, and these days it's just too big. She's she's yeah. just too big for Valentina. I don't I don't believe that, that fight would be you know, it there's a potential that it would be competitive, but I just do think that she'd just be too big unless the fight takes away a cat takes place at a catch weight of 130 but i don't think a man man is not going to say yes to that which she's also, too I much to think amanda's making 130 no she's not she's got to go on <laughs> that jose true. aldo bantamweight diet yeah which, you know is he, he let's be honest he didn't didn't look all that healthy at bantamweight yeah. he looked at, yeah. but no i completely agree and you know as i was alluding to earlier thank god for erin blanchfield because that card was long you I, know what would really help william knight's career um athletic greens we'd like to give a shout out to our sponsor at athletic greens their signature ag1 is perfect for daily nutrients and gut health support ag1 solves two of the most important health needs the nutrients your body needs every day and the foundation of long-term gut health together they fuel whole body health impacting everything from sleep digestion energy mood immunity to the health of your hair skin and nails but william knight clearly wasn't on it and i don't know why because he needed uh, he, uh, he needed all the athletic greens. 
Yeah. He also needed a rocket up his ass. Like, I don't know what, you know, coming from the, the card started off fairly well. You know, we had three three finishes on the first three fights. So, uh, OSP just getting blasted out in, in under yep. a minute. Yep. We then had Lena Landsberg, unfortunately suffering a knee, but I like Lena Landsberg, I really do. But that was a, oh God, I'm glad that she tapped when she did. Yeah, Maria looks good. Eh? Marina, she's she's someone to keep an eye on. For sure. And, you know, she lost a man on Furo, and then since then she's gone 3-0 and with two finishes, two submissions. She's dangerous. Yep. You had Alexander Hernandez and Jim Miller. I really enjoyed the fight. Didn't quite yep. go the way that my heart wanted. My head did think that Alexander Hernandez would be a little bit too, too young for Jim Miller, but I don't care. Jim Miller is trending towards UFC 300, so he can go... UFC 100, UFC 200, UFC 300. <laughs> Close down. Too. Thank you very much. I'm happy with that. Then we had to sit through 15 minutes of Pracnico just kicking the shit out of William Knight and William Knight's just being there. He was just there. I d- yeah. You know, I don't want to go in too hard on William Knight because I've seen that he's had death threats and all this. No, yeah, but something he, happened. Like he, mentally, he couldn't get over. Something. He froze. He froze in that fight. You know, sixty-three kicks to the leg, and you know, if if you are uh, Martin pra- uh, Prashnirko, what? Yeah, you, you look at the size of William Knight and and the the, the knockout power that he does have. If mm-hmm. you can stay on the outside for fifteen minutes and just kick, just do it. You know, get a win and and get in there against a, a less. Dangerous fight. I think that's it for William Knight in the UFC at the for for, for this run. Oh, yeah, personally, zero and three with a with a finish victory, uh, finish defeat in there. Sorry, and obviously again, Maxim Grishin. He he broke the record for the largest weight miss in UFC history. But it, man, he looks like a superhero, doesn't he? He's mad. He Usually, looks... he's 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 super heavyweight champion. <laughs> Ability, yeah. he's, he's he's cut from the UFC. Imagine showing someone a picture of like William Knight and then Justin Gaethje and be like, "Yeah, that little chubby Justin Gaethje, he's the he's a real violent guy." <laughs> exactly. You just you just you know him and Alonzo Menafield, who you know Alonzo does pull the trigger, but visually those two guys should be top two of the division. Mm. In, in in reality, you know Alonzo's on a different trajectory to uh, to William Knight, but you know, and then we had to go through fifteen minutes of heavyweight action. <laughs> And then we had to go through 15 minutes of light heavyweight action with Jordan Wright. Who's who at the UFC is putting Jordan Wright in the in the co-main event? Yeah, I know. He, I I don't get. I don't understand. He he's two and five in the UFC coming off the back of three. Yes, he's never. This is the first time he's gone the. This is the first time that he's gone the distance in his career. I just don't understand it. I I didn't need to see Jordan Wright fighting the UFC again off the back of three straight finish losses to then have to go and watch him go 40, uh, 15 minutes. Oh, God, I almost said 45 minutes. Fuck. But, you know, I don't need to see Jordan Wright. But interestingly, you know, he outlanded. I'm just, he, he landed 200 strikes to uh, Pyogre's 85 strikes. Still lost the fight. You know, I didn't need to see that. But like I say, thank God for Blanchfield and, and Jessica Andrade. They put on... Uh, a really fun fight. Yes, in the first they actually round. made the and weekend. A, they made the weekend really good. Super. Yeah, yeah, a really good finish uh, in that fight. And let's just hope. You know, I th- I think this this weekend's card is not great. It's better. It's a lot better. But like like we talked about, I think we've mentioned this in the past. Actually, you could cut everything like just keep lightweight as the heaviest, and then everything below that is great. Everything above that, you start to get like. We saw a lot of light heavyweight and heavyweight fights this weekend, and it was, it was all right. But let's look at this weekend. It is a light heavyweight fight. Please go on. Nikita Krylov and Ryan Span. Have they not fought before? This is the most light heavyweight fight that, that we're going to get. This It's just so light heavyweight. It's the, I just don't see the, you know, I just don't see how this, we're not going to hear about this fight until Thursday, I don't imagine. Because that's just the kind of promotion that these two guys are. These two guys aren't talkers. Nope. You know, you got number six versus number eight in the division. None of these guys beat anyone inside the top five, in my opinion. You know, Ansi Smith, Rakic, Blahovic, <laughs> Ankalaev, Jiri Pachka. None of these guys beat them. I think Johnny Walker puts in a, a, a strong fight against 
you know, I think he's lost it on both, but he put in a good fight against them both. For me, it, you know, it, it is what it is. This fight is a lot. Is there something fight. else this weekend that we could watch? Like, is there There's a, a lot this weekend? Look, luckily for me, I think this card overall for me gets uh, six, five or six out of ten because top to bottom, I'm, I'm not mad about this card. I don't think this card is okay. a bad card, top to bottom. Okay. In comparison to the car we had this weekend, you know, we've got Haley Cowan returning for I think it's her second UFC. Sec, yeah, oh no, sorry, it's her UFC debut. She obviously fought on the Contender Series and won. She's a pretty hot prospect out of. Uh, I think she's she had a career in I want to say LFA. Um, off the top of my head, I'll just double check that because I don't want to get that wrong. But she she's, I think the UFC will get behind Haley Cowan because she, you know she's she's seven and two at the moment. She's she's 31 so she is sort of in with regards to to she's not you know she's sort of in her peak at the moment yeah she 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 fought for lfa a lot you know she had she debuted for, i mean she had an amateur fight in lfa she all of her other fights have been in uh in lfa but she's she's got she got finishes on her record yeah she got a split decision victory on the contender series and gets it gets a contract which kind of tells you all you you need to know about how the ufc kind of see her She's facing Alan Perez, who I think, I think her UFC debut is one of the worst debuts I've ever seen. But it is what it is. She gets another chance. You know these things happen. But you know Rafael Alves is right down on the on the undercard. It's not bad. He's a fun fighter. If you remember when he fought Drew Dober last time out, yeah, that's he true. Was, he was, you know, he was dodging, dodging, um, dodging Drew Dober's punches. He was, he was, you know. So schooling him a bit. Yes, he did get knocked out in that one. I think there's a body shot, but he's a, he's a really fun fighter to watch. Ode Osman versus Charles Johnson to catch weight because that's Charles a, Johnson's, that's a good one. That's Charles a really Johnson good stepping in on, on short notice, I believe. Yeah. I, I like these fights, you know. Joe Selecki's back. Jordan Levitt returns. I think this is I think I believe this is his first fight since the Paddy Pimblet fight. Yeah. So yeah. Jordan Levitt returns. Jasmine uh, just yeah, I can't say yeah, her name. Nailed it. Perfect. Yeah, Jasmine, Jasmine Vicious. Yeah, Canadian Jasmine. But you know, yes. <laughs> yeah, she lost her last fight. But prior to that, she she beat Kay Hansen. I really like her. I think she's a, a really fun fun fighter and a great talent. Mike Mallott, I think, um, is when he won his his UFC debut against someone pretty. Let me just quickly have a look. He beat Mickey Gore in the first round of the UFC oh, debut. Yeah. You know, mm. it's it's a pretty good win. And oh, then you look at the, the sort of towards the top of the card, Tatiana Suarez versus Montana yeah. De La Rosa. That is the ah, one to watch. Ah. If you like grappling, this is one for you. With that being said, yes. now that I've said that, it'll play out on the feet. Of course, it will. obviously. But Tatiana <laughs> Suarez, you know, eight and zero in the UFC, been out of action now since 2019. She won. You know, she's a tough, tough 23. She won tough 23. Beating Amanda Cooper in the in the final, she then you know she she holds a win over Alexa Grasso. She holds a win over Carla Esparza. She holds a win over Nina Nunes. Mm -hmm. She's good. taking on Montella De La Rosa, who's got a good ground game. She's got a good ground game. Now here's the weird thing. So Tatiana Suarez, I want her to stay at women's flyweight, but she has talked about I'm going to take one flyweight fight and then drop back down to strawweight again. That no, stay at flyweight. It's a it's a much weaker division. Your body's much better built for it. And it's 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 just waiting for a wrestler to come in and take everybody down. Like it's it's a very striker heavy division. I think sure. all of her future opportunities should be at flyweight. She needs to stay at flyweight. I assume she's gonna win. I think she's gonna win this one. I think she's gonna win. And she uh, for me, this is the last chance for Tatiana Suarez. You know, she, she's 32 yeah. now. She's had injuries, she had illnesses, she missed out on the Olympics, I think, because she had neck issues that then she found a, you know a, again a cancer in, in in you know she had cancer she she luckily got we kind of got out of the other side of that she then had injuries yeah. obviously since 2019 on paper she should be the one of the champions of the division in my opinion the way absolutely. she's looked absolutely if a body can can sort of hold up with the, the work rate required i think she'll be challenging for about possibly by the end of the year but no I problem. completely agree. Stay at 125. Yep. You know, feel Montella De La Rosa and see how she feels at 125 because she's, like I say, she's a strong grappler. 
So you get to feel a, a, a legitimate flyweight competitor. See how you feel against that legitimate flyweight competitor. If if you feel out strength, maybe go down to one fifteen. But that's probably breaking your body down a little bit too much for someone that is, you know, essentially made out of glass. There's a heavyweight fight on there. Well, but <laughs> great. <laughs> Um, Cut the division for all I care. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the fight, Augusto Sakai has lost his last four straight, all yep. by knockout. Okay. Don uh, and then Dante uh, Myers lost his last fight, got overturned because Hamdi uh, tested positive for some sort of enhancer. But you know, when so, you're weighing in at you know two fifty five and you're ripped, it's yeah, expect to knock at the door. You know, I mean, it's just like, come on. But it's rough. It's rough out there. I guess this guy's rough out there. Adrian, uh, Andre Muniz. I, I like this one, yeah, you know, Andre pretty, Muniz. It's not bad. I think yeah. it's uh, undefeated. Held, held, holds a win over Uriah Hall last time out. Holds a win over, you know, sub, sub to Jacare. I think that was Jacare's last MMA fight because obviously now he's turned into a world champion boxer. Um, <laughs> Let's just, it's just less said about that, the better. But, you know, Brendan <laughs> Allen needs to keep this one standing. Yeah. Andre Muniz needs to take this one down. I will put. admit, if, as far as middleweight fights goes, outside middleweights outside the top 15, it's not bad. That's yeah, a pretty good for fight. Sure. That's, that's yeah. not bad at all. I'm not quite sure why Muniz is taking this fight, personally, because, you know, he is ranked number 11. He's just got a win over Uriah Hall, who was ranked at the time. Yeah. Why is he now fighting... Way outside, you know, not way outside. Brendan Allen is outside of the top fifteen, but you're trying yeah. to tell me that Chris Curtis, Calvin Gastelum, Imanov, I yeah. mean, Darren Till wouldn't have taken it. But <laughs> you're trying to take tell me that those three guys weren't weren't available. Jack Hermanson, Sean Strickland would have taken the fight. You know, Sean Strickland I, would have taken the fight. Of course, so, they would have taken the fight. you know, it, it questionable why that fight is is you know why Muniz is is, is fighting. I'm just looking. He, you know, he's been out of action for a long time. It's, I don't know. It's only July of last year, actually. It seems like we Something. haven't seen him for a long time. Yeah. But you know, so he, he's not sort of suffering from injury. He's not on a comeback trail. I'm not quite sure why he's taken, like I say, taking a fight, fighting a guy outside of the top 15. But Brendan Allen is a, he's a good, good competitor. You know, he's a topology. He's got him ranked number 18. Sure. That's yeah. fair. He's a very good fighter. Keep your eye on kind of this fighter, right? He strikes me as a kind of fighter that just gets to the point and then loses, and then just gets to the point and then loses. You know, his UFC record. He, he got he got a uh, he got a, a contract on the Contender Series. Went three and zero, defeating Kevin Holland, Tom Breeze, Kyle Dalkus, then lost to Sean Strickland, and then he beat Carl Roberson and and Puna Soriano. Then he lost to Chris Curtis. Now he's on a three fight win streak. Might be a tough one for him against Muniz. I'm probably going to pick Muniz in that one. But like I say, you know, in comparison to last week's card, this, I mean, we've managed to talk about this card last week. We just touched on the main event. This uh, yeah, card is, I like yeah. this card. Main event aside, I like this card, which is ironic. But you know, it's it going to be good. It's going to be fun. Is this Apex? Yeah, it's Apex. Yeah, yeah of course it's. <laughs> Uh, but l l I want to get to some of the other action this weekend because I wanted to make like, wow, look how terrible the UFC looks this weekend. Some of the other offerings aren't much better, actually, now that I look at it. KSW 79, um, Arcadius Verdro 6 is going to be back. That's really fun. Uh, of course, everything in KSW, they're 155 and lower. Really good. Their welterweight's good. Their their headliner is Phil DeFreeze versus Todd Duffy. Guys, yeah. I'm trying to make an argument for KSW here. Why are you going to put yeah. this match? That's a weird one. Phil DeFreeze. That's terrible. <laughs> Yeah, Phil DeFries, for some reason, post UFC. I mean, Phil DeFries versus Todd Duffy, too. Last oh, it's two. The, the, I'm looking at, I, uh, you know, I. <laughs> you sound surprised. You're as surprised as myself. I had no idea that these two fought before. Todd Duffy got the first round KO December 2012. But let's, you know, let's just breeze past the fact that that happened. 100 years ago but you know that, that 11 years ago these two first fought now they're yep. fighting for the belt Todd Duffy coming in first uh, first fight with the promotion yep he's coming off a loss from what 2015 in his yeah, most yeah what interests me is that he's fighting for the KSW belt he's coming off a loss a knockout to Frank Mir which yes. says kind of everything you need to know then returned in 2019 yes accidental eye gouge so he's sure. 
last, last one you picked up, 2014. Straight in for the KSW belt. Come on, KSW. You know, we, we have a lot of respect for you. Yes. You're a little bit better with that one. But their it's... names, their names. Their names. Bellator. 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 I mean, the P- <laughs> PFL Challenger Series this week. I, I like this card. It's all, the yeah. all-girls card, the all-girls flyweight card. That looks good. There's UFC sort of, not rejects or has-beens, but there's re- UFC, you know, Chelsea Hackett didn't get the... Uh, Mm. Didn't get the, the contract on the contender series. She lost in the second round. She returned, you know, a str- young Australia. I think she's 20. She's 23, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Shana Young, who obviously had a pretty decent career in the UFC. Um, I mean, she was one and three, but you look at the girls that she faced. Miranda Maverick, she went the distance with. Mm-hmm. Stephanie Egger, who is who's, who's fairly decent compared to Macy Chierson, and she beat Gina Mazzani. That's not a, that's not too bad a a, a UFC you know no. names names wise. Those are good. You then got another girl, Sandra Lavado, who who had an opportunity on the contender series, didn't quite go away. I think Caitlin Neal, if I just if I'm right, is yeah, yeah. Caitlin Neal got to the the final of the, of tough. She's now f- facing. Uh, she's now competing for the uh, for the PFL. Mm-hmm. It's just it, for a challenger series card. I, I I don't I don't have any problems with this yeah. card. I think the challenger series is going really well for the PFL because they're getting guys and girls through the door who maybe wouldn't aren't going to get the opportunity in the the regular season. Yep. Something that does concern me slightly, and I've, I've mentioned it before, is the quality of competition and how strongly in favour it is of home fighters, should we say? Yeah, they're they're taking the um, the philosophy of like building your fighter like Bellator often does of like maybe this is a bit of a mismatch to yeah. the hometown fighter. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, know. I, I sat down with Dakota Ditchova. Hopefully, I'll, I'll yeah. sit down with her again. I, Absolutely. I, yeah. I, I I think that she's best. She 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 has to be fighting better competition than Rick Ginola, who is three and three. Lost her last fight. Yeah, Dakota's so promising and like so she's talented. Three in the last fight, in her last yeah. four fights, Dakota's seven and zero, oh, and yeah. she's got two two finishes in in the PFL and yeah. six finishes altogether. She she's she's the poster girl. She's just kind of sweetheart, but I think that she is a lot better than the competition that she's being given. Of course, she's going to accept these fights. She's a co-main event, I believe. Yeah. Ah, oh, I can't remember his full name. I can't remember his name. His nickname is Smooth. Why can't I remember his name? Are you talking about Benson Henderson? No, the, no yeah, no well, way. Yeah. No, <laughs> but a, well, yeah, but uh, let me just quickly check because he's one of my prospects to watch. Uh, he finished his fight via leg kicks. Simon in, Powell. Yeah, yeah, Simeon Powell. Yeah, Simeon Powell. Yeah, yeah, Simeon Powell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Powell is headlining, and he's in a very competitive fight. You know, very competitive fight. If you check out my article on. Uh, on the site of the PFL, they've released their European series competitors. There are some great names in the in 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 uh, that they've managed to sign up to a to contract. They've also signed a, a girl. I believe she's she's a, well, she's a more tight competitor. She's fit, she's she's competing on Mayweather's boxing card this weekend. Not even going to talk about that. Her name's Sammy Jo Luxton. She's signed for the PFL. I saw on Twitter last night that she she since opened up an OnlyFans. So you know, if, if you got to make that bank, you got to make that bank. I guess got to make the bank. Yeah, she's exciting. She's got a, a big, big online following. Sammy Joe Luxton. So uh, keep an eye out for her in the PFL. I believe that they'll they'll build her similar to similar to Dakota. I uh, you know she, yeah. she's going to be getting fights that she should be winning. And then uh, yeah, she had a Muay Thai fight back in. I don't know what year this is. 2022 yeah it's okay she's all right yeah. I, I see why I she's a draw but she she i think she competed on the the road to one yeah the muay thai gp the yeah, the, yeah, one yeah. To so one. you know she I, you know she's she's on this may with a boxing card she i for, for me sammy joe is is she's fluctuating between professional fighter and social media fighter professional fighter social media fighter 
if you gotta use it, this is this makes some money here. Sure. Oh, I see, I see. I'm looking at your Instagram. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But you speaking know, of one, I'll do a quick rundown on one championship because it is quite yeah. good this weekend. And, uh, John Lineker and Fabrizio Wonderboy and Drive will be fighting for Lineker, your friend John Lineker. My best friend, actually. Yeah, yeah best your friend. mate John Lineker. Uh, yeah, go yeah. way back. Yeah, asked him about his kids. How, how that? I'll sure go on, to yeah, check but... that out. Yeah, link that. You know, Tim will link his interview with John Lineker below because it's it's a fun read. It's uh, it's I'm surprised. Yeah. He seems he, kind of stiff. I'm surprised we got such good answers out of him. Yeah, exactly. I would have expected he. If you watch the way he fights, he's a one-word answer kind of guy. Yeah, he's tight and just one big shot after the other, and you manage to sort of obviously break him down. Which, uh, which uh, I'm glad about because it makes for a really, really fun read. Best friend John Lineker. I don't know if he's going to win this weekend though. I think Fabrizio Andrade is so good. He's so fast. He's a Muay Thai kickboxing background, and he fights like it. He's 25. He's fast. He's quick. Anyway, it's a rematch. Vacant title on the line. It's really yeah. good. Uh, uh, co-main event: Tom and Shai. If you haven't seen Tom and Shai, he's a featherweight. Or sorry, he's a um, he's a Muay Thai phenom. At 23 years old, he's picked up the title on a string of knockout wins. He's beat the champion by decision in his last fight. But this guy's a wonderkin. Like, he is he is the next Rod Tang. We have, have like he's. He's so flipping good. Um, and then, yeah, the top two are the main are the main ones there. What else do we need to get to this weekend? I think, you know, obviously we've got Daniel Kelly competing on that card of grappling yep. as well, which I think she'll eventually make the move over to MMA if she's... Oh, yeah. But, you know, 27, let's get, let's get that, let's she, get that she's move. She's a training partner here. of... She's a Aaron Blanchfield's training partner. They're both at the same gym. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, no wonder that Aaron Blanchfield is dangerous <laughs> on the floor. Yep. We've got yeah, we've got about ten minutes left, so we'll do five minutes on Bellator, which is not yeah, the Bellator card's right. not too bad this weekend actually, and then we'll do five minutes on fucking Tommy Fury. And Absolutely, Bellator. five <laughs> minutes on Bellator, five minutes on Jake Paul. I'm yeah, ready. Exactly. Uh, Yaroslav Amosov versus Logan Storley, champion uh, versus interim champ. It's it's a fight. There's there's a fight going on. You I think don't I'm like... pick a... Come on. It's an undefeated combat Sambo world champion fighting. We know who's going to win this fight. <laughs> I just, I, I have, you know, and they've already, they've already fought once before and Amazon won. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. It's the, only, yeah. the only, the only sort of blemish on, on Logan Storley's record is, is Amazon. But I just have a problem with, with Storley after his, after he stalled the fight against MVP in, yes. uh, I think that was, that was in London, I believe. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. Come on, man! Like just... it was controversial. I remember you and I talking about it. Yeah, that was yeah. A, that was a fun one. Yeah, exactly. But you know, the, uh, that's a good fight. I, you know, Bellator. I'm a, if I don't even know these days they've still got their their agreement with BBC. But if they have Saturday night Dublin, you good. know, a nice time for 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 you and me. Yes. Pedro Carvalho still competing in Bellator. I think he's been in Bellator since Bellator began. It feels like he's <laughs> in the feels tournament like, era. I don't know. It just seems like he's been in there forever. But you know, coming off a big win against Mans Bernal last time out against Jeremy Kennedy, who pretty good. Again, you know, good name. Peter Queeley returning to Ireland. I'm just excited for his walkout more than more than the fight itself. Yeah, electric. Peter Queeley does what Peter Queeley does with regards to walking out, especially in Ireland. I mean, yes. let's be honest. Let's let's go. Yes. Sinead Kavanagh Absolutely. also, obviously, you know, we're not surprised that Bellator in Dublin have got pretty much Irish fighters in almost every fight on the card. You know, Sinead Kavanagh rematching yep. J.N.R. Harding. Obviously, Jeremy spoke to Harding a, a few weeks ago. They fought before rematching Harding, obviously, won on, on a doctor's stoppage. I think this is a tough fight for, for Harding. You know, she's yes. just looking down her record now. She's one and three in her last four. I think Sinead Kavanagh may be getting a, a knockout. Kieran Clark, 6 0 undefeated. You know, this this card is, is good. You know, you've got a lot of undefeated. Opening up the card, you've got Magomed Sharapov, Zabit's brother, Kassan, undefeated, Stephen Hill. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I think he's young as well. He's one of my, yeah, he's 22. He's one of my 25 under 25, I believe. Definitely watch him. Holy crap. I, I mean, if he's not one of my 25 under 25, I'm claiming him as one now. You've got, you know, undefeated fighters in the fourth, in the first five, uh, in the first six fights, seven fights, sorry. And then you get to Richie Smolin, who, you know, returning to Bellator had the, had the, uh, the weird goings on on tough where he was cramping up and he couldn't actually make the walk. Brian Moore's right. on the card, but 
And uh, also keep an eye out for Liam McCracken. Uh, I believe he's Liverpoolian, 21 okay. years old, 3 and 0, three finishes. He's a, a good, good, solid prospect. So keep an eye out on him. But he's got a, you know a tough test, four and one, going up against a guy that's four and one. It's it's a good Bellator card. I don't have a problem with this Bellator card at all because you know it, it's going to be run by SBG Island. Let's, 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 yeah, let's, yeah, it's absolutely. an SBG Island card, which a lot of the Bellator cards, especially in Dublin, are. You know, these are Bellator cards. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. But yes. I think you know. I think, like I say, I think it's it's a it's a it's a a reasonable card. You know, you've got you've got a belt on there. You've got Peter Queeley returning to Dublin. You've got Sinead Kavanagh. You've got I think Charlie Ward's on there. He's never in a boring fight. Yeah. This time you won't have McGregor there because he's in he's filming tough. Yeah. <laughs> and he won't be jumping in the cage and and trying to you know. Um, by Mark Goddard and all this, but you know, it is, it is what it is. You, you won't get that excitement, but you'll get excitement from the actual fights themselves, hopefully. You know, let, let's we, we did say that we will talk about it. Do you want to talk about the tough news a little bit, a little yeah, bit more? Yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I will admit, I, I don't. This is like, I don't know, I think this is a little bit standard. I will personally admit that this isn't the worst news to come out. Uh, I think it's very like colored of like Connor's a bad guy, so let's trash him. However, I do wish the USC could act, just act with a little bit more grace every once in a while. Of like, yeah, we cut three guys who were agreed upon on the show. Day one, we cut three guys, but they will have opportunities in the USC. No, they're just like, no, we cut three guys. Fuck them. Just have a little bit of grace. Just pretend they're going to get one fight in the UFC and then cut them after that. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Or just you know, guarantee them a shot on the contender series. Or. Sure. You know, we'll make sure that you're on the next Dana White's looking for a fight card or something Fine. to that elk. Yep. Or, yep. or, you know, cut them, but allow them to be in and around the training room. I mean, that might happen. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I'm not really sure either. And I can't, but you know. I think maybe they, the USC also needs to control the story because all of these things might be happening, but they're not saying it. It's all just media people being like, no, they were cut flat out. If the UFC is saying, no, we're giving them a future opportunity, you guys need to say it. You guys need to come out and start uh, controlling this story a bit more, right? Yeah, for sure. And because the, the stories that we're, we're getting is that, you know, a certain amount of, of guys were announced sort of maybe Monday, or Tuesday last week. Mm-hmm. And then somebody commented saying, well, you know, it was announced, but I've been cut because Connor wanted to get some of his guys in there. I think they're in, in the in the lightweight division. Connor wanted Chris to get Martinio. some of his guys. Chris Martinez yeah, was good. Exactly. And I mean, he's been in the UFC. He's 0-2 yeah. in the UFC, but he took Sean O'Malley to the third round. Which is something that not a lot of guys can do, but yeah. you know, the the rumors and stories are coming out that certain guys were were on the on, on the cast, and then they've been cut in favor of McGregor getting some of his guys in in to compete. Let's yeah. not forget this is exactly what happened the first time that Connor competed uh, competed oh, as a as a coach. Artem Lobov yeah. lost his preliminary round fight. Someone, yeah. I think, got an injury or, or for whatever reason, and he could bring one guy. Of course, he brings Artem back into the fold. Artem then goes on to make the make the finals. Artem yeah. lost his first round fight in the Tough House and was yeah. out of the tournament. Yeah, we're giving Connor if it, if this is the case, and and Connor has actually, you know, essentially gone up to Dana White and said, "I want these three guys out, and I want three of my guys in." It just ruins the credibility of the show. Why? Why even? You know, it's but, just yeah. Who's who's know. the bigger name now? Do you know what I mean? But but also this is maybe is maybe this is kind of one of the weird things that we were surprised by. How did you guys not organize this six weeks ago? You know, when the casting call goes out, it's very easy for McGregor to pick up the phone or McGregor's manager or gym leader or whatever. Just be like, oh, by the way, we're going to bring three of our guys, so don't you know, don't cast x amount of guys. And they're like, yeah, no problem. Of course, that's part exactly. of the agreement. Like like Fedor used to do this a lot too. Of like. You're going to sign me and five of my gym mates. And a lot of like managers will do that kind of thing because it's a benefit. How did you not agree ahead of time? How was this not or- day one you're doing this? You guys look like amateurs, you know? I mean, we we knew that McGregor was the, I mean, there was rumors of McGregor being a tough coach months ago. True. We yeah. knew officially after that Dana White release, I think, what was it, three weeks ago? Some of that, yeah. And you're trying a tough to tell call me went that, out, like a casting call went out months ago. Presumably. Exactly. And you're trying to tell me that it gets to almost like day one of filming and they're like, whoa, hang about. Like, I don't yeah. want these guys. I want my guys. Amateur McGregor just, just 
turned up with three of his guys and were like, well, these guys aren't me. I'm not going to send these guys home now. So three of your guys have got to go. It's, it's weird. Also, another weird thing about this tough series, Bellator champ, heavyweight champion Ryan Bader is on team. Yeah, he's a Michael, Michael Chandler, Chandler coach. Yeah, he's so good. If on Bellator, a good team. I'm saying, so my heavyweight champion, a guy that wasn't good enough for the UFC, I think he's got a losing record in the UFC. Sure. My, my, my heavyweight champion is over there wearing a UFC vest, yeah. being on UFC TV, generating views essentially for UFC. Yeah. We're sat over here accepting that. Can you imagine I, if... Let, let, let's be honest. Can you imagine playing devil's advocate, Silver Gan yeah. wins, uh, beats John Jones, is a heavyweight champion. John Je- yeah, Silver Gan then goes to corner a, a Bellator fighter. Sure. He's absolutely fine. That happens a lot. He has he's he's heavily involved in in errors, but let's say Cyril Gang goes over there, big Bellator, a uh, big wears a big Bellator T-shirt, is on their broadcast, you know, making money for Bellator, promoting Bellator essentially. Dana White is probably going to strip him, not just to be pissed off. He's probably going to strip him of the belt. It's weird to see Ryan Bader back in this because I believe he came up yeah. through to Ryan Bader. Yeah, he was the oh god, I can't remember. That was so long ago. Yeah, <laughs> I but, don't but, remember that. It, yeah, Ryan Bader to be to be wearing. You know, he's, it's it's just strange for me. I, but so but he, you know, season eight, is... season eight, he was on. He won season yeah. eight of stuff. Yeah. It's okay. just a weird goings on, but. But you know Bellator needs the exposure. They're actually probably pretty pumped on this exchange. If it was the other way around, yes, the UFC would say, get the hell out of there or else you're cut. But in this case, Bellator's probably saying, yeah, no, we're we're of course fine with this. <laughs> I mean, you know. If... It's a Conor McGregor season. I think they're... It's, it's Conor know, McGregor season. That's a, they're going to make like... Michael Chandler being the sort of seasoning to Conor McGregor season. I think it's going to be weird for, for because you know Ryan Bader is essentially going to be wanting his guys to to prosper mm. to get them a contract in the UFC. Why would yeah. he not be wanting his guys to prosper to try and get a contract in Bellator? Maybe. Yeah. Hey, that's absolutely know. fine. Yeah, it, it is what it is. But hey, at least this season actually has some headlines coming in and out. It's an interesting season we're finally getting. But I'm going to throw two things at you real quick, and then we can move on. But uh, thing number one, IVs. Every day I logged into Reddit, Twitter, Instagram. Everyone's talking about IVs. I don't think I care that much. I just I don't. They they only got banned in 2015. Everyone's probably using them. This is like the most mild form of cheating I've ever seen. I don't stop me when I'm wrong here. Yeah, I mean, I think if you. <sighs> People are very concerned about this. I agree that there should, if found to have taken an IV, if yeah, if it's, it's the rules, but he should be cut. He should have the belt taken off him. He won't. Absolutely no chance, because they will get around with the exemption of it was best for Islam Makachev's health to take the yeah. IV because he was so dehydrated. It's such an issue. However, if it's done by an official doctor, it's fine okay we can we can you know we can do these things especially if you're a home t- i know in this case he was the away fighter but if you're a hometown fighter i'm sure you can find a doctor that will sign off for the ufc to get you know one up for your fighter look the doctors used to approve michael bisping one eye fighting like they're they're approving an iv yeah. you know, these yeah, doctors work for the UFC. but my <laughs> argument would be well okay everybody is cutting weight everybody is yeah. cutting down Aside from maybe heavyweight, everybody's cutting weight. So yeah. why not have a UFC registered doctor, a small bag of a small IV bag, fifty milliliters, apply it to every single fighter post weigh-in. Fine, because that, that way that you know you get everyone healthier going into the octagon. It's not going to mask any drugs because the UFC fighter, the UFC doctors are the ones that are doing it, it might, you know, and it, it's make it, it's eliminating any of this chat after the fact. What was strange is one guy from his team saying, oh, no, it was just a medical kind of bruise on his arm. Ali Abdel, he's saying, oh, no, 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 no. It, he did have an IV, but he's allowed to. Yeah. Then deleting the tweets. Then Jeff Novitsky yeah. saying, well, you are actually allowed to. In 2019, we said that you, you are allowed to on certain circumstances. 
just this is getting dumb. Did he take an IV? Yes or no? Okay. If yes, is it... was he allowed to take an IV? Okay, that's fine then. If no, yeah. Who cares? Conversation over. And I, yeah. I watched Luke Thomas's live chat, and he was like, "I don't really care." Like, no. <laughs> just like and you know, he was fatiguing in that fifth round anyway, so it clearly didn't give him some superhuman stamina boost. And you know, how much is it really going to give him twenty four hours before the fight? Yes, it will maybe help him to rehydrate a little bit better, but he, he's had twenty five fights. Yeah, the twenty four of them he probably hasn't taken an IV. Every fighter it. used, and like every fighter, it was a very common practice up to 2015 that just every fighter would use an IV to rehydrate. Like this McGregor is the still, mildest form of cheating I've ever seen. McGregor if still hasn't has, has, has got a fight book and still isn't in the USADA testing book. He, yeah, he, he, yeah. Come he's on, burning a hole in the bottom of a piss cup at the moment. Like, <laughs> yeah. He, 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 let's address that before we start addressing his like Makachev taking a hundred <laughs> milligram IV. And point number two, point number two, we did talk about it last week. I don't think we actually need to cover it that much. Tommy Fury and Jake Paul. Do you, do you, I don't have anything to add. Or We actually had a pretty good discussion last week. I don't think I have anything to add after that. No, the pressure's on Tommy Fury, isn't it? He, yes, he, it he needs to, the boxer from the boxing family needs to be yeah. the Disney Channel guy who's <laughs> got, who we, we've never seen Jake Paul actually have the ability to box. He's he's six and oh, yeah. and he's knocked out pretty much all of his all of his opponents apart from Anderson Silva and Tyron Woodley the first time. The first he time. dropped Anderson Silva. If he doesn't land that huge right hand, does Tommy Fury outbox him? I don't care. But maybe <laughs> like, I kind of like it though. Like we're saying I don't care, but like I'll actually probably go out of my way to find highlights for this one. This I'll, is I'll a probably, little bit fun. Yeah. I mean yeah. it's pay-per-view on Sunday night from Saudi Arabia, so it's a decent time for us. You know, yeah. my team's in a in a cup final on Sunday, so I won't be watching it live to say the least. But Fair enough. will I be like you say, trying to find out find some highlights or find a stream for it after the fact? You know, uh, once obviously, you know, it's a top rank ESPN Plus show. So once the fight has been and done, will they then release a a stream for it on on YouTube, which is what they they often do? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if I don't see it by the time we sit down next next Monday to discuss it, no big deal. Don't this is what it is. We'll see, we'll see the result and we'll say, oh, you know, fighter X beat fighter Y. Anyway, so some real fighting. Did yeah, you see? It's... Do you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. I think that we're going to get all the pressures on Tommy Fury. If he loses, it's a dreadful look for him. But he'll come out with it. Tommy Fury's already got the excuses. I've just had a baby. I wasn't training properly. Yeah. I had a bad weight cut. You know, I wasn't. <laughs> used, I, I flew out to Saudi Arabia too late. If Jake Paul loses, it's well, yeah, he's the boxer from the boxing family. I wasn't. You know, I flew all the way to Saudi Arabia for a press conference a couple of weeks ago. I've been trained in MMA. I've had, you know, the PFL sit downs and whatnot. Yeah. You shouldn't be, you know, I've already saw their excuses out for them. So, you know, it is what it is. Done. Don't really Perfect. Don't even <laughs> care. We covered everything this weekend from UFC to, to Jake Paul to KSW. Like, there's nothing else we need to cover here. Uh, Fraser, I'll put the links down below for everything. Talk us on out of here. No, yeah. I see. Like I say, I, I put a, a piece out last week, uh, sorry, yesterday about top five beatdowns. It's just a fun little article to write, really, because, like I say, like we were going on about the women's flyweight division, it shouldn't be. It, the the all, all fights should be really competitive. These ones on paper were competitive heading into them, and in reality, absolute beatdowns. But keep it locked to MMA stuff because we'll be, you know, we're going to start doing a few little reaction pieces if we've got time to, you know, little 10 minute videos here and there saying, oh, mm. did you see this news? What do you think about this news? Here's what we think. So keep an eye on the YouTube channel. And, you know, I'm sure some of the guys have got uh, interviews coming out later this week as well. Obviously, as I alluded to, Tim interviewed uh, John Lineker ahead of his bout this yeah. week. So uh, Tim yeah. will link that below. I interviewed Nathaniel Wood last Monday. Such a good interview, too. Such a good interview. He's fun. Yeah, he's, he's a fun guy. Hopefully we'll... Uh, well, I'll speak to him again when he when he has a fight booked, but he's he's going through those knee injuries at the moment. So, yeah, you know, keep it locked to MMA stuff because we, it's building, it's building, it's building, and soon enough we we're, uh, you know, we're probably going to be be interviewing uh, Jake Paul and, and Tommy Fury live in the ring. You know, this why not? Is what happens? This is what happens. Hey, Gabby Garcia's back. Maybe we'll get on that one. Anyway, thanks for your time, folks. We'll talk to y'all soon. <laughs>